Welcome to the Inclusion Think Tank podcast brought to you by New Jersey Coalition for Inclusive Education, NJCIE. As the name suggests, this podcast will discuss inclusive education and most importantly, why it works. On this episode, I welcome my guests, Tim and Amy Rohr. Tim is a speaker, author, and self-advocate. He and his mom, Amy, share their tips for how schools can become more inclusive and the projects that Tim is working on to advocate for better social inclusion. Welcome back to another episode of the Inclusion Think Tank podcast brought to you by New Jersey Coalition for Inclusive Education. On today's episode, I welcome my guests, Tim and Amy Rohrer, and I'm really excited to have you both on today. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Yes. So um, I would like to start off this conversation with uh, this first question, which is, can you just tell us about yourselves and um, share something uh, share something fun that you like to do in your free time? <laughs> My name is Timothy Rohr. I'm a speaker, of advocate, and author for Discipline Inclusion. And something I do during my free time, I like to do art, like painting, drawing. Occasionally, I've been going out fishing, hiking, kayaking, riding a bike, and doing outdoor activities. That's fun. I um, love fishing. <laughs> yeah. And I guess I'm Tim's mom, and I'm kind of like his business manager now, just kind of developed into that. Um, but he's amazing and does great work. Everybody's inspired by him. As far as myself, um, I also have another child who's 16 years old. And as a family, we also are part of a nonprofit foundation called Five Health Foundation, where we give back to our community. Um, We just had a food drive. We're having a clothing drive coming this weekend. Tim's a partner in that as well. It's a team-founded program, and I run the volunteer operations for our teams. What does inclusive education mean to you? How would you define inclusive education? Inclusive education means that we not only teach special ed students how to communicate with other people, but we teach their regular ed peers how to communicate with them. Inclusive education means like allowing people with disabilities to be part of the regular ed population. And one of my uh, analogies with my, I made a flag about inclusion in which, in which the, the yellow stripe means people without disabilities, blue meaning people with disabilities, and the center stripe is green, which means we're integrating both groups of people to be together. And this is oh, a book based I off of my. I love it. Wow, that is such, that is such yeah, a great and analogy. See it says, even though some people are different, we can all be friends on the bottom, but the flag does, wouldn't typically have the words on it, but he came up with that idea. So I think inclusive education just really basically means giving people the same opportunities as everybody else in the same environment. Yes, that is such a great analogy. That is it's so simple and so true. It's like we can mix, you know, we can put everybody together and, you know, I, I love that. That's a great analogy. Um, and you said that's a bookmark that you that you have. Yes, that's a bookmark. He he has the idea for a flag, and we have it in a like a banner size as well, like really big. Oh, oh that is great. That is so. That really just made my day. <laughs> I love mm-hmm. it. <laughs> um, so Tim, can you tell us about the educational guide that you have written? It's called "How to Be a Good Influence to People with Disabilities." And can you share with us what inspired you to um, to create this? This pamphlet is called "How to Be a Good Influence to People with Disabilities," and it lists what a disability is to children, and then with ten steps of how we can in- include them. This set says what is a disability, and then gives them a walkthrough about about what disabilities have effects on people of, and and all of this is the steps that children can take to include them. Like the first step, n- number one, if you see someone who is different from you, don't be afraid of them. They just want to be like everyone else. Be nice and in- introduce 
stuff to them, start to talk to them. And then with more steps, like if they're having a hard time doing something like tying their shoes or opening their snack, offer to help them with it. And my favorite part is number nine, be sure to spend time with them outside of school. Invite them to come over for a play date or for a party. Try inviting them to spend time with you and your group of friends. See the park, movies, bowling, mini golf, library, or the museum. And this pamphlet's available for free on his website. Um, Tips for inclusion, the number four, he created it. Yeah, it's a free resource on his website for anybody that wants it. That's great. The one thing I, I really love about it is um, that you made it for children because then you broke it down into very simple, you know, it's 10 steps, but it's, it's, they're very simple and easy to do. Like, I love that you said number nine was your favorite to invite them places outside of school. And um, I was, I was born with a disability myself. I have uh, spina bifida, so I use a wheelchair and uh, crutches. So I definitely can, uh, can relate to that. And, um, you know, having friends in school and outside of school, I think is, uh, really important to stress and uh so that's it's a great thing that you that you created there and we'll definitely link uh put a link to your website uh in the show notes for this episode so everybody can go and uh download that free resource because i think it's very useful and and will be very helpful to many uh many young people i'm guaranteed towards young people because children learn the learn best when they're little and they're open-minded to learn new things while once they reach middle and high school, they start to close their minds towards new, towards learning opportunities. Yes, that's so true. They they definitely absorb a lot more when uh, when they're younger. It's easier to um, you know to show them things, and and they they really understand it right away. It's really uh, very interesting how that how that works. <laughs> um, so, in addition to uh, the pamphlet, you also have written a book, which is really great. It's called Timmy's Story, a story about autism and friendship. Can you share with us um, a little bit more about your book and, um, you know, what it's about and, and why you wrote it? This book is called Timmy's Story, a story about autism and friendship. This book is about a boy named Timmy who has autism. And, they show, and it shows like that what he's sensitive to and what he's obsessed with and it shows him like going going to speech therapy and being diagnosed with autism and then at the end his teacher Miss Bethany was concerned about Timmy being different and not fitting in so she decided to teach her class about Timmy and about autism and the kids decide to hang out with with them like at pizza parties and other places at the very end of the book. Tim not only wrote the book, but he illustrated it. He did all the pictures. Yes, drawn. I was just going to say that. That is so fantastic. Yeah. I love the uh, the illustrations. I, um, I'm not an artist uh, at all. <laughs> so anyone who can draw and uh, illustrate things is, uh, you know, I, I really, admire that in people. Um, I, I love looking at art and, and illustrations and things. So I really, uh, you know, I thought it was really great that you wrote it and illustrated it. And, yeah. um, and it shares such a great message of, um, you know, a friendship and the importance of, again, making friends and um, just talking to people. I always say that people should talk to someone who is different than they are. And, um, you know, and you find out you'd like a lot of the same things, like you said in the story, they, uh, go to uh, pizza parties and things. So it's like a lot of people like pizza. So you, if you find that, uh, you know, that one thing that you have in common with somebody else, it, it really can uh, create a good and long lasting friendship. Yeah, and he's actually working on a sequel to it, but this book, if anybody's interested, it's available on Amazon. And he's working on a sequel about a yeah. sense of friendly birthday party. So people can understand, you know, how to adapt and, and include people with disabilities to make them more comfortable. Yeah, you said it was a sensory friendly birthday party? Mm -hmm. That's great. Wow, it's, these stories are so needed. And um, I think that's what's uh, missing a lot of times. As you said, it's available on Amazon. You can go to Amazon 
and, and search for books about disabilities and topics related to disabilities. And again, it, it, I think they miss out a lot. Um, they've gotten a lot better, but uh, they miss out a lot on children's stories. And that is, again, that's where we need to begin uh, educating others about disabilities, uh, you know, when they're small, when they're young to, um, you know, so when they grow up and like you said, when they're in middle school, they can remember the story they read when they were, uh, you know, a younger child about the person with autism or another disability and not be afraid and want to um, become friends with, with somebody who has a disability. So it's really important that you're sharing these stories and, um, you know, I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for that sequel on that uh, on this story. That's great. But this this book to me story, the the one we just shared, is a great conversation starter for children in school, like grades K to five. It's kind of what it's geared towards. But it's been purchased. Uh, our local school districts, well, we had two school districts because we have different high school districts. They each purchased over a hundred copies, but other districts have bought multiple copies for their classrooms and. He's, um, he was even the keynote speaker where they bought a bunch of books for their staff at the back of the back to school year. And he's gonna be doing a professional development book talk on the book um, come December. So uh, it's very, I think it's a great tool if people wanna look into it. It is, and that is, um, and it's great again that you wrote it and you illustrated it. So you are, you know, you're the best person to talk about it. So it's, it's really awesome that, uh, you know, you're getting invited to all of these all of these events to get a chance to talk about it and that people are purchasing the book and school districts are purchasing purchasing the book in uh, such large quantities because it's um again it's a very important message that um that needs to get put out there so uh you know i i just wish you the best of luck with everything it's really uh really cool to see all of this happening for you that's really great <laughs> and and one thing to mention that even though this virus is not going to end anytime soon. Like, I don't want COVID to stand in the way of, of people hiring, hiring me to do presentations about physical inclusion. Like, it could be virtual or in person, but either way, I'm making an impact to, to make the stigma against people with disabilities less common, one small step at a time. Like, for many years, we've been during our social skills to teach them to specialize students. But sometimes like it, it may work for them and sometimes they still talk about the things that they're, they're in their comfort zone. If we only teach special ed students then the regular ed students will not have any understanding how to communicate with special needs people. It needs to be a two way street. We have social skills lessons for people who are regular ed and social skills for people who are special ed. So I think his point is we should educate and teach these skills to everybody. So when he goes out, he's trying to educate the general population to learn how to include, communicate and interact with people that have disabilities because they're always the ones pulled out to try to learn how to interact with the people that have the dis don't have a disability, but why don't they teach the general population? You know, it really should be taught in schools the other children need to learn how to adapt to them as well. And they, they'll learn and they'll benefit from it. It'll help everybody. Absolutely. It's, that's so true. And how, um, you know, and it goes back to your, um, to your, your uh, flag idea with the colors and just, you know, bringing everybody together and teaching everybody everything. So, you know, everybody can just, you know, everybody can just mix together and, uh, you know, make things happen and just, um, it, it's all that it, I'm, I'm so happy that you're, that you're here and with the, to hear about the work that you're doing. It's really, uh, really exciting for me. I am, um, much, oh, much older than you, but I really, um, really uh, appreciate the work that you're doing for, uh, dis people with disabilities and just, um, helping to educate everybody. I'll, um, I'll actually be 40 years old next week. Um, yeah. So, um, I, you know, so I, like I said, I've been passionate about these topics for a long time and uh, to see you at such uh, a young age going full force at it and writing books and things like that. It's really exciting to see. Yeah. He's only 21 and yeah. he's accomplished a lot in the last three years since he's been out of high school. He's kind of made it his mission 
to get out there and educate about inclusion because it really was hard for him in high school. It was kind of a dark point for him. So I think the way he kind of dug himself out of it was first when he wrote that pamphlet and then that landed on the front page. Actually, the New Jersey Coalition of Inclusive Education was the first one to publish it. That's how we came to you guys and kind of started our journey where it, it got on the front page of the newspaper and went viral. And, and then he started making other resources and people started asking him to speak at major conferences and in schools. Um, you know, then COVID hit and that's when he wrote the book because we had a lot of time in our hands. And he also has a YouTube channel, uh, Tips for Inclusion, the number four, and then he makes animated educational videos about different disabilities, autism, friendship, and inclusion. If people want to check that out, there's a lot of great videos to help educate on it. He also was during the pandemic, he's a busy boy. He works on this stuff like day and night. We created a lot of his resources into printable resources on teacher pay teachers. So it, he's doing pretty well selling things on there. So it's called tip, his store is tips for, it's always the number four inclusion on there as well with a lot of great posters, worksheets, lessons, videos, all kinds of things about inclusion games that he made um, to help teach. Um, this is what he wants to do. He's just out there trying to get out there as much as he can. Yeah, and you're, as you said, you're very busy. <laughs> That's really great. And, uh, you know, I, I think uh, the time that we all spent the last year and a half or so, uh, you know, spending time in the house and, and uh, finding a way to be productive, I think, has uh, been helpful for uh, for many people. So that's really great that you uh, took that time and, and found a way to, um, you know, continue uh, your mission. So that's, that's really, really cool. Yeah, um, we had to learn to navigate the virtual world, uh, but that yeah. just kind of opened first uh, opportunities because now he can present anywhere you know in the world he doesn't have to physically be there so right yeah and that's I love what you said like you didn't want um you know the pandemic to stop people from uh hiring you to speak because like you said you can just do it virtually now you can stay right in your home and uh you know speak anywhere across the globe now so it's really um it's really really great that you're doing this so thank you again for uh the work that you're doing. Our next question is, what are the benefits that you uh, have seen uh, as a result of inclusive education? Inclusive education, the benefits of it is that it makes people with disabilities feel the same way as everyone else and, and not have to be, have to label them into their own world. Like people with disabilities deserve to be part of the rest of the community but with accommodations to their, to their needs, almost like how we have different options of food for people who like, are like di diabetic, have allergies or are vegetarian. Like we should have those, like for certain aspects, like, like friendships and like college, like we should have programs tailored to their needs rather than just the traditional program. So yeah. I think it doesn't just benefit the person with the disability, it benefits the, everybody out there because they can learn a lot, um, you know, from somebody with a disability. They have a lot of strengths and things that, you know, that they can, they can do and people should, should be open to that. And I think if everybody's in the same environment, they'll understand more and um, be able to gain on both ends. Yes, yeah, it's all, all of what you said is, is so true. It does benefit everybody. And um, I think it, it makes, it, it makes everybody better as, um, as adults, as they get older, you know, learning uh, how to interact with each other as children and as in the student, as students. Uh, you know, it helps you for when you're outside of school and it goes back to uh, to your pamphlet that you created and, and saying, you know, don't just be friends with somebody inside the school building, make sure that you invite them to places outside of uh, the school hours. So it's really, um, you know, it all just ties in together and it does make everybody better. So that's a great, really good point that you uh, that you brought up there. Thank you. Our last question is, what is one thing that you feel that can be done in every school to better improve inclusive education? 
uh, by what just after my flag, like we should like make the school green, like not just yellow or blue. That we should be teaching regular students how to communicate with people who are different from them. Mm-hmm. Teach them like to like in- include them on the playground during recess. Let them sit, invite them to their lunch table during lunchtime and ask for each other phone numbers and so they can spend the time on the weekends or during school breaks doing fun things together. I think it really starts educating them when they're young and that's that's the foundation of his pamphlet, his book and everything he's doing uh, to try to get into these schools to help them understand um, about disabilities. If the children would learn about what a disability is then they wouldn't be afraid of it so much. And maybe they would, it would just be a natural part of every day. And someday maybe we won't even have to use the word inclusion. Everybody will just be included. And that would be amazing. So I think the more schools educate, whether it's with Tim's resources or on their own, I think the better. Yeah, that's, um, it is, it's so true just to continue to educate yourselves and, um, you know, through great resources um, like Tim, I, I think that your, uh, the resources that you're putting out are so important uh, because you actually are someone who lives with a disability so you can better understand and you have um, a great understanding and uh, a way to talk about it that I think uh, is missing a lot of times. So um, again, thank you so much for uh, the great work that you're doing to be 21 years old and to have that uh, that energy and enthusiasm for such, uh, you know, for something that has such a great message and a great meaning is uh, is very important. Like, I really hope that that schools should be required to like teach regular students about disabilities. Like, it should be like mandated more. He's actually written to some politicians and um, people. Some he had a actual response from New York, Governor Cuomo, and they put up, you know, when he was still in office, put up his website and his book on their state social media site. Um, New Jersey, he spoke to the New Jersey Department of Education in January 2020 before COVID hit. I think COVID just kind of like made it much harder for us to get back into things, but he's doing it and he's getting word out, but he's still sending letters and we're still always trying to find out ways to get word out about him and his resources and get him into more places and trying to make it happen because it's, it's so important. It, it shouldn't be forgotten. That's so true. And I, um, you know, like I said, I look forward to all that is to come for you and from you. It's uh, very encouraging that you are um, out there and like you said, writing to politicians and uh, to get some things changed. So it's really, uh, it's great that, that you're doing this work. And I thank you both for your time and uh, you all have a great day and I will uh, definitely be in touch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Inclusion Think Tank podcast. This podcast is brought to you by New Jersey Coalition for Inclusive Education. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube or Spotify and don't forget to follow us on social media at NJCIE. Until next time.